Uh, hello, so this is our, uh, our third lecture about Adamar matrices. So we'll get into the, the geometric aspects now. So, so far we've seen uh, real Adamar matrices with the Adamar conjecture, which is very interesting, and all these questions in combinatorics design theory. Then uh, we've seen uh, complex Adamar matrices, basic facts, and uh, algebraic aspect, roots of unity, all that. Now we'll get into uh, deformations and uh, differential and algebraic geometry. So let's find first this, uh, this presentation. Here we are. So deformed Adamar matrices, it's basically about the formation. So it's going to be a, a local study, if you want, of the Adamar matrix manifold. So that's a reminder from the last time. So the, the complex uh, manifold Adamar, it's just an intersection of M and of T and square root of N U N. I mean, this is exactly the manifold formed by the complex Adamar matrices which are matrices here, so entries on the unit circle, and then the rows must be pairwise orthogonal, which means exactly that uh, the matrix rescaled by square root of n must be unitary. So this is our set now. Uh, you see these are both smooth manifolds, right? So uh, the problem is that when you intersect it, of course, not uh, smooth. Uh, so that's the theory now for this manifold in particular, the Adamar manifold, it's, it's very far from being smooth. The problem somehow uh, is to, uh, the local problem is to uh, give a point to understand the singularity there. So in order to do this, uh, well, let's start with some, uh, some basic geometry. So uh, first of all, I use this notation. So uh, given a manifold X, a point P, I'll denote by XP a uh, neighborhood nodes necessarily specified. And now uh, let's look at the deformations. So um, we have this, uh, well, the natural idea is to multiply HIJs by powers of a parameter Q, Q on the unit circle, to be more precise in the neighborhood of one. Okay, so here I'm using this T1, I'm using this notation here. It's on the circle in the neighborhood of one. So multiply the entries by, by real powers of, uh, of Q and uh, try to get another more matrix. Now, uh, well, if you write the orthogonality equations, here they are. So this is item number two, that's clear. Now, uh, there are two more things. So uh, you see, if I take these uh, equations here, the, the powers of Q are, of course, linearly independent, right? The real powers. So I can separate this equation, actually correspond to all these equations with number four. You see the coefficients must vanish for any power somehow. So we have two implies four. Now, if this is true, uh, then you can multiply back by, by any kind of functions, right? Uh, on the end, on these matrices, and you get three. And finally, from three, uh, you get two. Yeah, this is, uh, this is clear too. This is the particular case where the function is an exponential. So uh, these are somehow the, the deformations which are called uh, affine because uh, there are actually many other deformations. So these are the special ones, the most important one. ones. Now, uh, in order to understand this, let's, uh, uh, let's look a bit at all the deformations now. So once again, I'll use uh, the notation xp, x, y, q, and uh, whenever I have a function from x to y, mapping p to q, it's gonna be denoted like this, okay, for simplifying. So we have, uh, given an Adamar matrix, we have several types of, uh, of deformations. So the most general thing is just a smooth function, right? From the circle, so all these parameters will belong to the circle, to be precise, from a neighborhood of one in the circle to the neighborhood of that Adamar matrix. That's uh, the most general thing. We, we assume that it's smooth, right? Now, as a particular case, you, you have those who are affine. So this was exactly all this business in this first slide. You see this, this affine deformations with all these equivalent conditions. And uh, what's the interest? Uh, well, these are the most interesting. And if you see here, for instance, the fourth condition is purely combinatorial, OK? You see? So uh, that's, uh, that's something much easier than uh, abstract deformations. 
the fact we have trivial deformations. So remember that any other more matrix can be a, you can multiply rows or columns by, by scalars, you still get another mark, That's something trivial. So in this, this setting here, uh, well, if we want to be affine, uh, the things that we multiply the columns with and the rows with must be powers of some Q. So that's somehow the statement, the definition. So we'll call it the uh, affine deformation, we'll call it trivial when uh, the CIG matrix splits and somehow rows and uh, columns. So these are the, the trivial solutions. Now, so you see, if we're interested in these affine deformations, but it's useful to think of them like this between trivial and general. As basic examples, now we have these are deformations. So, uh, yeah, remember that's uh, just the usual tensor product, and you add some parameters there, uh, which are on any circle. Now, for the thing to be affine in our sense, these parameters must be all powers of some, uh, some number on the circle. Now, how to deal with all these things? So we we'll have all this kind of deformations. So let, let's compute now. Uh, you would like to say tangent spaces, but in, uh, in real algebraic geometry, when you have singularities, it's rather tangent cones. So I have four of them associated to any points. So first, maybe let's start with the second. That's the basic thing. So the tangent one is the set of tangent vector to the deformation of H. OK, so if it's singular, it's not necessarily a vector space. Now, uh, item three now, f in tangent one, so that's uh, using affine deformations and that's a linear space. Uh, we'll see it in a second, actually it follows from what we did already. Then inside of it, so it's more and smaller, you have the trivial tangent cone, once again, uh, a vector space obtained by um, um, using these trivial deformations. And now let's go to item one. So this is a trick here. Remember that the Adamar manifold is an intersection of smooth manifolds. So the intersection of smooth, but if I take the tangent spaces at the smooth manifolds and I intersect them, I get a linear space that we call enveloping tangent space, which is definitely bigger contain all this, uh, these cones, right? So you see, finally, we have things like this. So uh, four things included into each other, cones. And this is a linear space. This one is a linear space too. Uh, this is a cone we don't know, and this is once again linear. So uh, our idea now would be to, uh, to compute this uh, enveloping tangent space somehow. That's that's the thing uh, which is easiest. Well, before that, let, let's have a description of this, uh, these cones. So, uh, well, first of all, the uh, enveloping tangent space, well, that's very simple. I mean, it's more or less the, uh, the things that we covered really before, that's the equations. Now, the tangent cone is a bit complicated. I mean, uh, if you get this condition here, that's what you get in general. Uh, now, the uh, the affine one is very similar to the uh, to the big one, the enveloping tangent space. But you see, for the enveloping tangent space, things must happen somehow at order zero, and right? not have happen at any order. So uh, you put this uh, instead of aik minus igk, you put q to that. So you see, if you differentiate this at zero, you get that. That's the idea. And finally, the trivial one, well, the exponents must uh, split over all the forms. That's what we're talking about. Okay, now, as a summary, let's make a bit of a summary of all this. And uh, so, yeah, let's be extremely modest, just try to compute not actually the enveloping tangent space, but just its dimension. It's the very the most simple problem appearing from all this. So this will be the called uh, this will be called uh, the defect of the Adamar matrix. So it's by definition the dimension, the real dimension of the enveloping tangent space. Now we've seen that this space is given by these equations, which are due to Tadezik Skolski, which appeared already, so that's basic geometry. And as another interpretation, yeah, which is actually the same thing as enveloping tangent space, if you think a bit. These are exactly the matrices which are complex Adamar at order one with respect to Q. But that's somehow what we know. 
so yeah, the thing this is interesting that it's the simplest possible question to solve about uh, the singularity at uh, at h of these manifolds. So let's see some basic properties. So first of all, equivalent matrices have equivalent defects. Yeah, just uh, write the equivalence and simplify to get the same equations. Then what else do we have? Uh, the defect, uh, of course, is uh, smaller than n square because the, the elements there are some matrices A, square matrices of size n and real. In the other sense, you have the trivial deformations, of course, which are always inside. So you see you have this uh, uh, trivial dungeon space, which has dimension 12 minus one. So that's why the defect satisfies this. And finally, if, if I have equality here, which means that it has only trivial deformations, uh, well, you can say that the, the image of H in the deface that the Mar matrix manifold, I mean, the quotient manifold when you deface your matrices, that's going to be a isolated. So we'll actually use this term isolated in what follows in this situation. I mean, nothing is isolated in a complex Adamar manifold because you can always uh, multiply rows and columns. But if you remove the trivial things, it's more in a deface sense. Isolation makes sense and it's very interesting. So we'll be back to, to this. Now, uh, let's do some computation. So in the real case, uh, well, if you work with that uh, equation, uh, where was the equation? This one won't get anything. So uh, there's a need for a trick here. Actually, this kind of thing will appear many times. So you have many interpretations. And every time you have another type of matrices, you have to, to modify this uh, defect equations. Some of the stranger in the equations, uh, you have to adapt them to your matrix. So uh, in the real case, it's useful to do this trick here to uh, uh, to set uh, rij is rj hij quite tricky and then e is rh star to get a bijection these are two yeah two transformations between matrices and the point is that when you do this you see the formula of this e guy is this and these are exactly the quantities let's go back uh, which appeared in the defect equations here Right, the defect equations just uh, say that Eij, Eij bar must be must be equal. So we're just left to the conjoinness condition on our real matrix, and that's it. Okay, so yeah, we have some change of variable get to something which is yeah maybe simpler. We don't know. But I think that this applies very well in the real case because uh, in the real case you see yeah, let's go back here. So this is real, so finally E must be real, that's all. That's all, so you get everything. I mean, uh, all the symmetric uh, real matrices. So the defect of any real Adamar matrix is, is N plus one over two. Very interesting, no matter what the real Adamar matrix is. That's resolved by, uh, by Solozzi, I think, yeah. Very interesting. So very good, we compared this defect for the real matrices. Now uh, let's go into Fourier. That's the other type of basic Adamar matrices that we know. So here it's following uh, Tadej Zikskovsky. So once again, the defect equations look good, but the manipulation, and the manipulation is as follows. So first, uh, well, your group G, which produces a Fourier matrix, you can decompose it as a product of uh, cyclic groups. So uh, each of these cyclic groups, they, they will have some, some generators uh, when viewed as groups of roots of unity. So the Fourier matrix in multi-indices will be something like this, right? Now, if you look at the defect equations, this become simply like this. So the tricky change of variable is to say P is AF, right? So to multiply A, is, I remind you, is the element of the with that enveloping tangent space. So it's good to multiply it by, by Fourier. And the equation simply becomes something like this, plus the self conditions. condition. So you get something like this, okay? Now, well, obviously, uh, now you can compute the defect. I mean, now you have to count the matrices like this, so it's a group theory problem. And here is the answer. Very nice formula, Tadej Zikskovsky. So the defect is sum over G over uh, order of G.
yeah, just count this to some combinatorial experience. And uh, quite interestingly, it's also equal to the number of one entries of the Fourier matrix. So why this? Uh, well, the number of one entries, I recall it that abstractly, uh, the Fourier matrix is the coupling, the Fourier coupling between G and is dual. So finally, I have to count G chi's such that chi of G is one. Now, in the sum of the G, you have to count how many characters do this and it's exactly this. It will be the same formula, okay? So very interesting. I mean, it's the number of one entries there. Now, we did our formulation for the Fourier matrix Fn. So uh, either with this or this, and led to this formula, which is very nice. Once again, today is Xkovsky, which is, uh, well, it's simple, but not that simpler, finally. I mean, uh, yeah, that's an interesting quantity definition of defects. OK, now this is for the Fourier matrix Fn corresponding to a cyclic group. Now what to do in, uh, in general? And here, uh, well, it's a kind of long statement here, which shows that you can compute. Uh, so let's uh, get into this. So the defect was this. It's actually better to put one here, I mean, to divide by the order of the group, because this quantity that will be not delta depends only on the group is a multiplicative decomposition of our isotypic components. So now the problem we want to do with these isotypic components. And here, once again, you do a trick. You write it like this with the CK the elements having orders more than PK. And this becomes multiplicative now, but for the P groups, OK? So uh, with this and this, I mean, you're, you're finally, everything finally can be reconstructed from this, right? So I have a formula, but the formula like, takes a whole slide, so I didn't put it here, I can find it. And that's in, uh, either in my papers or for those of uh, Tadej. Tadej Zikowski did all the work that we've been talking about, including FN, and then uh, uh, Mia separately. Uh, Tadej did this. And, and by the way, all this comes from the defect comes, I'll show you also from, from uh, Karabegov, Long ago in a preprint, also a Muslim forum in there, and there's a whole story there. Okay. Now, the problem is so we computed the defect of Fourier matrices. This means the formations, I find the formations at order uh, zero. Now, what's something very amazing is a recent result by Nicola White stating that these deformations actually they are attained, all of them. <laughs> they, are at order, they are order infinity, all of them. So it's very interesting. So the idea is, yeah, once again, yet another trick now for uh, reformulating the defect equations. This is just crazy. I mean, these equations, you, you can't, it depends on what you want to do every time you have to reformulate them. So Nicola White found that everything simplifies a lot when you use this exponential uh, um, notation. So I remind you that uh, unitaries are exactly to the TA a being anti-Hermitian, right? That's the, the Lie algebra. So with this notation here, so I multiply h by unitary, right? Abstract unitary, depending on a theory L. Uh, when is it a Damar? Well, here the rows are orthogonal, of course, it's unitary, but uh, you have to check that the values, the absolute values of entries are one. If you compute them again to something like this, I take the derivatives so at order zero is true, and uh, this is true here. So by using this now, so this is true for any Adamar now. The point is that in the Fourier case, as the discovery of Nicola White, this thing simplifies enormously and uh, you're led to something like this. So you take a finite Amelian group and do a, well, take some kind of cosets, as you can see here, define some matrices in this way. And then these are solutions for the equations that were in the previous slides. So Adamar, and actually if you count them, you see this course, that's all that. It's exactly the defect count somehow. And uh, so the defect is attained, I mean, uh, meaning that every order zero deformation actually is order infinity deformation. So very interesting on this. Now, well, in the end, let's talk about a few more things which are a bit more specialized. So first is an interesting notion of master Adamar matrix. So this comes from, uh, from colleagues of mine in Sergi, actually, the, the physicists are 
uh, Avon and Geneviève Roller and many others. There are like six authors there based in, uh, in Sergi Pontoise. So these are the matrices of the following simple types. So uh, lambda i to the nj. Uh, okay, so you take your lambda and you raise them to the power nj. Somehow it, uh, it splits in a strange way over rows and columns somehow. And uh, well, the interesting thing is that many, many things uh, can be expressed in terms of this sum of exponentials, just uh, the powers here for the, the master function. So these are uh, PR motivated by things like Young Box, or uh, things like that. And uh, at the level of examples now, uh, the Fourier matrices are like this, of course, because it's, uh, that was the formula, W to the ij. So you can write that W to the i, that's your lambda i, to the j, that's your nj. So Fourier's master Adam are more generally these data deformations uh, where the data parameters well, must be a bit special. Okay, of this form here, some kind of uh, kind of progression. Well, not really. So of this form here. Another thing is that another uh, among the discoveries of these guys, uh, one of the others is that uh, there are not other examples somehow besides Fourier matrices, their deformations. So they have some of this conjecture, but it's very difficult that the master Adamar matrices must appear somehow from, from FN. It's a deformations. Now let's try to compute the defects. And uh, the defects, once again, you need another, another tricky formula. They're all different, all these formulas for the defect. Every time you, know, you have a new matrix or type of matrix, you need to, to find a good uh, transformation. So this is it, AHT, multiplied by the transpose. You get to something quite simple, which are actually everything can be expressed in terms of this master function. So yeah, that's of course an elementary computation. Now, uh, in principle, this I think, uh, well, the defect. Remember, it's uh, the, the deformation. So uh, this is just the following conjecture, which is much easier than uh, this difficult conjecture here, master and number one. That the only isolated master uh, matrices are the free matrices FP with P prime somehow. But uh, here are some tools for proving this, but I uh, you know, don't know how to do it. Well, research. And uh, well, finally, as the last thing, let's talk a bit about isolation. So that is something that we haven't talked about. So I remind you the defect uh, is greater than n minus one because there are always trivial deformations. And when there are only trivial deformations, the matrix is called isolated. Bearing in mind every time that it's isolated in a defaced portion of the Adamar manifold, of the manifold itself. Now, there are many examples and uh, kind of uh, strange, exceptional, and uh, McNulty and Weigert came with, uh, I don't know how many, three, four years ago with a very nice construction unifying all this. So, uh, the thing is very simple, it's based on two CRMs. So first of all, it's the simple thing that uh, if you take an Adamar matrix and you multiply by things like this, once again, the same idea splits over all the columns, but with matrices now, which must satisfy this condition that each Li star Ij is Adamar, then the whole thing is Adamar. So this looks terribly complicated, but the point now is that these things here, solutions, uh, of this uh, equation here, Li star J must be Adamar, actually come from, uh, yeah, these are well known from you, actually, literally on BS basis, but uh, here, here's your formulation, maybe more uh, simpler without using anything. So just take a prime number, and then you take this uh, these matrices here, so you, you multiply FQ the Fourier matrix by this kind of diagonal thing, the, the progression here. Then these matrices, if you call them E1, E2, and so on, they satisfy exactly this condition needed by, uh, by theorem one. Yeah, so that's something very elementary. So the idea you now, if you plug in this into this, you, you get lots of interesting Adamar matrices, which are often isolated. So that's their discovery. And uh, they cover almost all the examples of uh, isolated matrices. And uh, the most well known one is the, this one of Tao. That's, uh, I mean, FP with P prime is isolated. 
And that's something which follows from that defect formula of Tadej Zikskovsky. But beyond Fourier, there's the simplest example. And uh, so I actually believe that this is exceptional, it's not. So uh, yeah, very interesting fits into this series. So very interesting problems here in the uh, relation with the evaluation. So this is in that was a look at the uh, yeah, differential geometry of Adamar matrices, differential algebraic. So uh, very interesting things, lots of interesting computations. So that was the basics. Now the end of the third lecture. In the next three lecture, we'll do more advanced stuff, more uh, more analytic and more uh, more specialized. So see you soon for uh, for new presentation.